a number of things that are important and consistent from one community, one Rosh Hashanah service to the other. And that is certainly that we are connected to the Jewish people by participating in Rosh Hashanah, especially in a community, that it binds us to the Jewish people. And then the things that we say are things that reflect our questions. What is the, what is the meaning of this holiday for us? So we would talk about that. They are comfortable going to work. They're not sure they want to stay home. And they haven't found the right kind of congregation where they belong. Uh, what we provide is a way for secular Jews to come together as a community uh, to reflect on the year that's gone by, to think about personal growth, uh, to think about their place in the larger Jewish community. But do it in the context of non-theistic readings, which makes sense to us. And the music? We try when we can to use music that is consistent in the, in, in the Jewish people, that you would hear another song. We may change the words, but we're looking to create both that family and communal tie for people within the context of truth. And I find it one of the most powerful holiday experiences to know that um, what we're doing connects us to the past, but has powerful meaning in today's world. Rosh Hashanah, it might be blowing the shofar or uh, eating apples and honey. Uh, it might be saying um, a version of Alvino Malkenu or, or Alchet. Um, for Passover, it might be having a Seder. Um, and it's, in other words, it's, um, it's, a, it's an opportunity for, for, um, for, for us to gather as Jews. Uh, we have a lot of different um, beliefs. Some humanistic Jews believe in, in God. Uh, some humanistic Jews are atheists, some are agnostics, some are, and uh, most people fall, fall on a line somewhere in between. Shana Tova, may you have a sweet and healthy new year, will of hope, renewal, and good choices.